That's how you start off your morning drive. You got to have the right energy. 100. We are live on the air, broadcasting everywhere, Heather B. I already know that. 2024. I'm here to witness it. It's 2024. It. Talk your talk. Come on, it's new energy, baby. Facts only. We got new light right now, Heather Facts B. Facts only. Heather B, we up. Spotlight. We are up. We up. God up. God up. Come on. I said the first interview we do. The 2024 on this show has to have some significance. You did say that. Remember I said that? Yes. It has to be impactful. It has to be with people that I personally, truly, 1,000% believe in and, and have followed and, and, and personally enjoy their work. Yeah. They're exceptional. They need to be unique. And I think we hit the nail on the target, Heather B. We got two guests with us today, DB. I'm going to let you do the honors. Ooh, I get to do the first hey, intro for the first guest? Come on, 20, No pressure whatsoever. We got two talented young brothers joining us today. One of them, he's been on the show several times. You know his name. Uh -huh. And then right next to him is a guy by the name of Kane Robinson. You know him from Top Boy, but he stars as Izzy in this new film with a beautiful black cast, talented actors all around. And I want to write her on because every time that Daniel has come on the show, we always praise him because he's definitely a pro-black from Black Mirror to Black Black Panther, the Judas and the Black Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> All black everything. That's right. If you have not seen this film, Sicario, this is an incredible film. And I implore people to watch this. After you watch The Kitchen, check out Sicario. This is one of my favorite films that you have starred in, brother. Wow. love. So please welcome Kane Robinson and Daniel Kaluuya. Come on, hey, man. Whoa, what up, what up? Love, Hallelujah. Love, 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 love. Welcome back. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, I'm excited, man. Yeah. I, I ain't gonna lie, Kane. No. I'm very <laughs> <laughs> it's still weird for me to hear my own name like Kane Robinson. You know? You're right, right. You know, I know we're here to talk about the kitchen. And first of all, congratulations, Daniel. This is your directorial debut, right? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. It, it, it has to be a little nerve wracking for you. It's a, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, like it's, it's very like exposing. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Kind of like, yo, this is how. I, this is what I think. This is what I care about. This is what. This is what I'm about. So it's quite different from when you're acting, yeah. How personal is directing to the actual piece? Like it, each scene, is it? Do, does it have to be aligned with how you are? I, I mean, not yes and no. Okay. Like, in a sense that because you're you're doing it with people, yeah. So it's essentially like it's a collaboration. You have to open it up, but it's coming from a real place within. You yeah. Know what I'm and then you kind of go, oh, I thought about this in my room, and and I have constructed this, and then Kane will come in and go, well, I think this, and I'm like, well, you know what? That's right. <laughs> do you know what mm. I mean? And then you then you make. You collaborate and you grow it with people, so it feels full. But it does very much come from like, oh wow, this is this is my inside. This is how I feel. Mm -hmm. How does the preparation shift? Because as an actor, you immerse yourself fully in the character, of course, you know. But as a director, do you immerse yourself in all of the characters? How much do you allow yourself to let go versus have a tight grip? I think you immerse yourself in the whole world, but also it's about doing it with a team of people. I co-directed this with Kidway Tavares, mm -hmm. so it's that kind of like you have a team of people. That you kind of and and for me, it's about getting the best out of everyone that's in the team, essentially, Word. and kind of going and then basically making sure everyone is doing what's best for the film. And I'm very much of the belief like the best idea wins. So it could be anyone. Do you mean there's Jadaya who's who's mm, in the Jedi film is 14, 13 at the time yeah. when we was filming it? He would have a note on the script and then we would change the scene. Oh wow! Do you know what I mean because he's he understands 13 year olds. Yeah, you know what I mean? so yeah. A bit more than me. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of like that kind of seeing. Just kind of seeing the whole terrain and going which one's best. Mm -hmm. Wow, Love man! It. Did, was he starstruck at, at you, Kane? Like when when he saw your co-star? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I you don't know? know? Yeah, nah, nah. He was cool. We 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 um we got yeah yeah. Of course he was. Get, come on, <laughs> man! What are you doing, man? Come on, man! Come on, man. Come on, man. He was talking come about on. top way in the rehearsal when Kane was there. Trust me. He's, he played it cool. Oh, he was gassed off Kane. Yeah, he's, <laughs> probably, he's probably played it down. But nah, it's cool. We we got um good man. It was nice to work with um yeah fresh talent. You know, young kid, and just to see him grow through the process of filming. And even when we see him now, he just looks like you know a, a couple years later, he's like a, a a new man. You know what I mean? And hopefully he, you know, keeps his head down and cracks on in this industry. And I think he's got a good future ahead. Yeah. Mm. Were, were you acting before rapping or nah. rapping? You was rapping, right? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't acting before that. No, no. Yeah. I just kind of yeah stumbled into it. Um, yeah, I don't know, like uh, ten or so years ago, uh -huh. through Top Boy. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't something I'd done growing up. It was just all, always music. Yeah. What, what was oh that? no, I was just waving at Kevin Hart. Bring him in. I think. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't. I just. He just. Kevin, yeah, he was just. What's happening? Kevin, want to come in? Oh, Kevin shit! Hart, Kevin Hart here, y'all. We got Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, 
Yeah, you know, Kev, 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 Kev got his own station here. Yes, you know, Kev, LOL channel. Kev's a pillar in that series. Happy New Year, everybody. Hi. Kev is keeping me with a job. Wow. What a pleasant surprise. No, because you would have cussed me out if I didn't come in and stop here. So I said, let me You're stop so right. Quick. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said, I'm going to come in. I said, why am I going to sway? And she said, I said, well, no, that can't happen. Just make me go in. Real quick before I do anything else, because I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't not pay homage to my family. That's it. Go, That's all it is. That's, That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah you would, you would talk shit about it, like. <laughs> 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 now it's gonna win. Now it's gonna win. What up yeah. with your king? Oh, I don't, I don't want to stop. Hey. I don't want to stop the amazing marketing and uh, promotion. They got the, they got the movie The Kitchen. Absolutely. It's on Netflix. Absolutely. Daniel's debut director. Yes. Yes. January nineteenth. Next Friday. Next Friday. Give him one question, Kev. Just the director. I won't give him a question. I'll give him flowers man i love okay. to see us hey. win i love to see us progress daniel the fact that you in that chair and on the other side is big mm. kane the fact that you're progressing and doing more in this business you're talented as fuck i know your following is growing you should see that you should feel that this is nothing but flowers so mm. i don't want to do nothing but give it because you guys deserve it that's what i am i'm, I'm king positive that. all the time yeah. nothing more no, all, right? No, no. all right i don't want nothing more man i just came to show you love real fast okay, that's you, it man, all right you. all right love you love you look at his pants look at his pants Somebody look at his pants. <laughs> pants are unusual. The pants are unusual. That's the money pants. You saw that right there? Come on, you see that? That's money, y'all. Yo, we did it, y'all. We did it. All right. We got what we needed. We got that, Daniel. We got Kevin in the clip. Hey, the kitchen is 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 the kitchen a metaphor for the hood? Essentially, but it's it's more about it's for me it's a it's an it's an idea of kind of like I think people that say no, yeah, when like the powers and the forces come in and like no, nah, we're not moving, we're not leaving, no, fuck you. Mm -hmm. That's that's for me is um that that for me what it represents. It's very much a child of like because basically I got I got the idea in a barber shop. I was like this this guy was in a barber shop and he was talking about smashing grabs. It was like ten years ago when you started. Yeah, this. ten years. And then he was doing smashing grabs, so they did a million pound heist in a minute and he was he was talking about it. And I was like, I wanna watch that film. You know what I mean? I thought it, was like, it looked like Reservoir Dogs in a Hood. In my head, I was like, This sounds amazing. Then I found out that he was getting paid they were getting paid like two hundred pounds to do it. So I was like, Right, two hundred pounds to steal a million pounds. I was like, What's that? And that says a lot about where these kids were at, yeah. do you know what I mean? And what they were valuing in themselves. They didn't know the mm. value in, and where we were at in London and how basically the kids that were in Oliver Twist, uh -huh. um, Fagan's Kitchen, they were from the same area that my barbershop was in. Wow. Do you know what I mean? It's like a hundred years later. Uh -huh. So then we was like, oh, this, this is the kitchen. And so we, we call this kind of like this kind of community of where people are like have that haven't got like a home or community but they've created a community within themselves mm -hmm. the kitchen but we're trying to say that there's a kitchen in every city essentially mm -hmm. okay where, where did you grow up Kane? grew up in east london east london east, um, yeah was it a lot of parallels um to the idea of the kitchen uh the, the yeah maybe some yeah in in the attitude and yeah a lot of places around london but essentially in 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 this story uh these this community of people have been moved here in like i don't know it's meant to be temporary um you know like gentrification what mm -hmm. happens and now comes time like the government have come in and they want they want to move them on they want out so they can like redevelop the buildings and they're like no we ain't we ain't leaving so it's stories like that like obviously this is a you know heightened kind of version of it but you hear about these stories of people being pushed out of their own communities yeah you know, so a lot of that goes on in London. So I'm very familiar with with that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, all yeah. right. Uh, I, I, and as you probably would be if you you know from Brooklyn or where. I'm from Oakland, Kane. You gotta come see us in Oakland too, man. Yeah, yeah. They'll love there. you in Oakland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I would love to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you, legend. Uh, um, this question is for both of you, but I'll start with Daniel because DB said something about ten years. You you've been working on this for ten years. Mm -hmm. How important is it? to be patient with your dreams and ideas because sometimes if you've been working on something for so long or you have this idea for so long there are a lot of things that can come in between it's like nah it's not going to work or maybe the timing how important is it uh, just to be patient with it all yeah it makes it makes me like realize that like time is part of the writing mm. like like it's like it ain't going to come out until it's ready mm -hmm. and you ain't ready to do it sometimes like mm. a, more, a lot of the time 
So it's like a lot of things had to happen. Like a lot of us had to grow. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, look, Kane's, in that time, Kane's career is completely different. Yeah, different. evolved, yeah, do you know what I mean, yeah. from 2011. Do you know what I mean? So it's that thing where, like, um, a lot of it, a lot of um, stars had to align in order to get to that space. But I think I was just kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I like finishing. Yeah. I like getting to the end of things. No matter how it looks, I like finishing. So I wanted to just finish. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I wanted to, to do, and I always had to let go of the idea of it being perfect. And this I was going to say, how, yep. how yeah. hard is it to like let go of something that, you know, it might have been in the script this way for four years. Right. Mm. And now it's coming to the time where, you know, is it hard to change things? Yeah. Like it's hard to, it's hard, you just go. For the greater but, good. Yeah. You have to just have to like go, oh, okay. Like, and then I, for me, I just don't want to make that same mistake again. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I go, all right, cool. Like the way I was thinking was wrong in that kind of sense. I wanted something too much, mm. to be honest. But that's completely me. Just that's not considering everyone else. And I just, if it's, but then I'm very much like, because of my improv background, I'm very much like, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Yeah. Let it go, mm. move on. So that's balance. what it is. As long as it's, is it saying what it needs to say? You get into what are you trying to say? What do you want to say? And that's what matters most for me. Daniel Kaluuya is here, man. Give big, big round of applause. Yeah. Kane Robinson is well. here. Okay, Kane 0888 BB, you got a question? Of course. So I watched the movie last night, guys. And um, I have to say, I mean, I have a ton of questions, but I'll try to keep these short. Daniel, um, you know, in Hollywood, a lot of times they'll cast, uh, you know, A-listers, people who are familiar with audiences, just because people like familiar faces on the screen. You're giving opportunities to a lot of people who, you know, probably won't be familiar to audiences who watch this film mm. um so i wanted to know like was that your goal in in terms of keeping it authentic because i didn't see any people who were american trying to do british accents and that sort of thing um and then for kane there's some moments where you have to get emotional like shed tears and i know that can be tough you know being strong black guy rapper and all this stuff and to show emotion or to find that place where you can get emotion from so where did you go for those moments in the film um, for me, it's just about who tells the truth. Do you know what I'm saying? Who, who's 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 right for the role? Do you know what I'm saying? And it's not. It's like I, I think because I have I'm I'm not trained, so I'm kind of I'm self-taught in acting. So then it's like I've never really been like, oh, you gotta be this, you gotta be that. If an American comes in and kills it, American comes in and kills it. But mm. there was an authenticity that we was going for, mm -hmm. that like that kind of needed non-actors. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's and then they give her like a kind of and then. Yeah, it'd probably hmm. be harder for them to land certain scenes, but then when they land, it's like, oh, I've never seen that before. Someone like Backrow G, who's in it, who's a great mm -hmm. rapper as well. Like, he do some things, and I'm like, I don't even know how, where you get that from. <laughs> it'd be hard for someone that is not of, um, that's trained from RADA to do that. So I think it's about being real. And then someone like Kane, who I've seen his growth yeah. on Top Boy, and I think mm -hmm. I've always used to see um, his <coughs> acting skills in his videos as well, like mm -hmm. someone like Routine Check or Night Night, you know what I'm saying, where you kind of see that he has that control. And so to see that, like, I felt like he was just a natural lead, do you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I always felt like he felt like he was just outside. He felt like a real person, do you know what I mean? And that's what we wanted this film to feel like, feel like how do we make the real world be here, but have, have our imagination and grow and make something cinematic? Mm, yeah, and, and for me, it's just so important to bring like a human side to you know the characters are play and yeah when you do read the script and you know that this scene you know is a very key scene and is a very emotional scene there's there is fear there you know there's fear and like i'm looking at the schedule like oh, what? <laughs> first thing i look at when when's that scene coming up when i gotta cry <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> and it might be like it might be like a month away but i'm like in, this is how i i'd be like it's always like in my head and i'm like okay 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 and you kind of like building towards it building towards it but i know it's so crucial for the character and it's just about just just letting go you know mm. and just like just kind of accepting what it is and just going all in and yeah i mean it's the funeral scene you're speaking about right right, right. um yeah and it was very emotional and you go to places and you know I, I try and you know stay there and tap into what i have to tap into uh to make it real yeah. when he when he finished when he finished the scene he was all like denzel <laughs> <laughs> denzel <laughs> standard ovation <laughs> kalani is in the back yo young lonnie light go ahead lonnie light big up both of you guys you know thank you guys for coming to the show um i had a question for you daniel so we uh we see you play very prominent roles like representing the diaspora, you know, and one uh, role that I, I wanted to ask you in specific um, was how did you prepare to play uh, Fred Hampton in Judas and the Black Messiah? Because it was it, it was very emotional. Like I, I, I get reminded of the scene when you were in the church 
and mm. saying that you were a revolutionary over mm. and over. Mm. And I, I got goosebumps when I saw that. Mm. And I just wanted to know like your mindset going into that film. Uh, I mean, when I played Chairman Fred, it was just it was just complete immersion. I can't lie, I just completely um, dipped away probably for a month before the shoot. I mean, I did I did go to Oakland. Mm-hmm. I went to where the birth. I went to the place where the um, the Black Panthers, the first act, of course, yeah, um, that they did on that on that stop sign. That was my house. Yeah, <laughs> was it your house? No, Shut it's up, right. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> sound it better. You, know, you the need to go home. You American home. trivia. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my you should have just, just went with it. Because you went back to the port. I went inside. Where was it? Um, I went there and then went to obviously went to Chicago and uh pulled up to wherever like. Chairman Fred like did talks and went to his old school, um, and uh, and I stayed in Chicago for a week. And then we met the family, and then um, before the shoot, we shot in Cleveland. I just, I just well, during that time, I spoke to so many people and I started getting random dissertations from about that time. I got my, this information and that information, and then I was like, All right, cool. And you're piecing it together, and then you can start working on the script. And it was just non like I, I was rel- relentless. Just mm-hmm. re- I did opera classes because because I'm not trained. Um, when I'm on set, I lose my voice in those kinds of scenes because you're really you're, you're basically projecting for the whole day. It's unnatural. It's like sprinting for the whole day. It's mm-hmm. a muscle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, you need to train it. You need to get to a certain level. So I did opera classes because I realized it was the it weren't the, it was the singing version of talking. It wasn't the talking version of singing, mm-hmm. and that's what we was resonating with when you watch it. Mm-hmm. And I feel when other actors have done it, it feels like talking, and that's what is not really connecting. So it's just complete like detail and and and. And immersion in, in the world and, and, and just serving serving the peace, man, and serving that man. And yeah. me, I've got to be on camera with this guy on the other side of the camera. <laughs> uh, Academy thinking, Award winner. Trying to do my... <laughs> <laughs> thinking like, what I'm trying to do, he can, he can do it. Like, nah, he can do it. Is that intimidating, was it? Uh, yeah, I, at times, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. How did yeah, you yeah. switch your like internal dialogue? To embrace it instead of fearing it? Um, I think it's, it's probably down to the way Daniel works you know so we we would just speak a lot you know we'll speak before the scenes we'll speak during the scenes and it just always felt like a real collaboration Mm -hmm. not like you you, you're doing it wrong or do it like this remember that's he's an actor yeah well a great actor and the director but also he wrote it too these characters have probably been in his head for 10 years yeah Yeah. you know so it's like you you, you're like at some point you gotta say do you know what i've got a I've got to do what I feel is right. I got to make it my own, but who better to take notes from? Okay. And, then, and then, but then a lot of the a lot of the edit was saved because of Kane's freshness. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And the stuff that he added, the stuff that the like the little things, the little looks that he would just go with a thought that I would never think mm. if I'm in writing right. in the scene. You know what I'm saying? And and that's I think I, I get what Kane's coming from, but it's like it, he has something so unique that no one has that is just that is dictates the tone of the film essentially mm-hmm. do you know what I mean and how he's carrying himself and how he approaches the scene how he and also the, I, I see the prep and the work that he puts in do you know what I mean I, I saw a lot of what I do in what he does naturally do you know what I'm saying so it was just great to work with someone that's from a similar area that I'm from that just wants to build and we want to put on like we want to make London global so Word. that's what we love it y'all doing it reverence man. that's what's up Daniel Kaluuya is here man give that man a round of applause Kane Robinson is love. here as well love it was, was the scene with Cameo Candy always in the film? Yeah, the, oh, in the very okay. beginning. That yeah, was a yeah. great scene, by the way. Love, love, yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> what, what, what is life like uh, um, post-Academy Award? What changes? What changes? You know, because I, well, I asked you this, because you know, recently Taraji was in the news, and she mm. talked about her expectations yep. after winning an Academy Award. Being nominated. Yeah. Being nominated, yeah. rather, um, and uh, how frustrating her journey has been you know Monique we've heard her talk about the same similar things as well mm. uh, I'm just curious to what people's journeys are like post Academy Award and when you hear those stories man how does that how does that I think resonate? I came to it I knew I knew it wasn't going to change much so I was alright okay. hmm. you feel me like I, I don't think like I think the path that I'm treading is not really dependent on external validation like that mm-hmm. so I really it's nice yeah I, I, like I appreciate it but I'm not really the de- it's not. If I keep, if I go in that vein, I won't make the films that I'm making. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be real, so I feel like, yeah, like it's probably. I, I don't really see a shift in that sense. I, I, I think probably when I go back home to England, I can get stuff done because mm-hmm. they care about that stuff like that. And then, all right, cool. How do we make this work? But I'm not really. Um, 
I knew I knew that like it's not dependent. There's a lot of actors that have won an Academy Award and don't really work like that after. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? They don't really yeah. they, that's their peak. Wow. Right. So Do you we, know what I mean? Well, it's actually a peak. That. We we yeah. got the wrong peak. idea about that then. The Academy Award. When you think when a person wins an Academy Award, they got bills right. lined up. That's for the them. launch but that, pad. That's my thing. Is this is you know, where does the idea come from? Huh? Yeah. Because it's a peak. Uh huh. You know what I mean? So what, like, what, what what's the next peak? Like, is that you? Like, it's like it's gonna be a decline. Yeah. Uh-huh. But you I mean, think- so unless you, if you, if you, because it, it's so I don't see it as I saw it for what it was, and I go, all right, mm. cool. I'm at this place. I I love how I got it. Yeah. Like, what I got it for now that. Chairman Fred Hampton, in, like in the Wikipedia page, they see what year that someone won an Oscar. They're gonna look at that and who's that guy? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean, in whatever year's time, that's yes. what it's about. And then in terms of my career, it, it's gonna go where it's gonna go. No, I think the valuable thing is I have an opinion on it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Um, I have a take on it, and then and then I just move around the world with that. Mm. I love it, man. Damn, give this man a round of applause. Kane, I want to ask you this question too. I know y'all gotta go. Um, but I really enjoy um, the British scene, the music scene. Me too. You know, yeah. um, Dizzy Rascal is a good friend <laughs> that we go way back when he first came out and we used to support his music over here in the States. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> when I when we have conversations about greatest MCs of all time, we never mention the British artists. Mm. When y'all have conversations about it, who do you mention? Uh, that's a very, very interesting question. <clears throat> because, and actually at Christmas recently, I was... Um, with my nephew and a younger cousin of mine and we got into that conversation they got into that conversation um but if you would have said uh t- 10 20 years ago when mm-hmm. i was young 15 years ago even 10 years ago if w- someone from britain was to have that conversation it probably would be flooded with american rappers mm-hmm. i think kids today when they have that conversation they've got so many uk artists that they grew up on mm-hmm. you know because we grew up on what well, me personally i grew up on Jamaican dancehall music mm-hmm. and American rap and when I started to get older I started to you know we started to form our music scene but these kids of today they have grown up on us on you, on know, you right on gigs yeah. on right. Dizzy and mm-hmm. Leafful you know what I mean so they really have like ownership over um, British uh, over rap music you know mm-hmm. in Britain so yeah if you ask me today I think um it would be a lot of British guys mentioned. Yep. Yeah. Who would you mention today? Me mention yeah. today. Yeah, who would you? Um, uh, all British guys. British yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, gigs. Yeah. You know, of mm-hmm. course. Gets. Mm-hmm. And you know, these are friends of mine as well. Okay. But um, I think like I think Gets is um one of yeah you one of the best yourself. artists. You mentioned yourself. You wouldn't mention yourself, bro. Uh, well, we have a have a beat. What are they trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> Get a moment. He's trying to get a moment. You just yeah, sway. You just know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. What you gonna do, man? Yeah, me aside. You, yes. But, <laughs> but Little Sims, um, Lil Sims, very talented oh. artist out there at the moment. I'm yes. big into Dave. Okay, I, I just want to put that spotlight on that British scene yeah. real quick. Ricardo's in Milwaukee. Go ahead, Ricardo. 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 Oh, wow. I'm the lucky one. Man, I'm a first time caller. What up, baby? Oh, first time caller. What up, baby? You made it, Ricardo. Go ahead. What's your question? Man, um, you know, I don't really got a huge question. I really just want to give both a big shout out to both actors. You know what I mean? Daniel, you know, you made a huge impact on the whole, the huge movie scene just by Get Out, you know, your movie Nope, mm. the Judas and the Black Priest, you know, you're just a huge, you know, inspiration to everybody. And you know, big flowers sent to you, Kane. Man, I was I was watching the show Top Dog not too long ago. I was watching the first and second season. That shit, that's dope. So, man, you guys, big, big props to both of y'all. And I appreciate both of you guys taking my call. Shout out to, you know, Tracy G, Heather B. What up, baby? Yo, yo, yo. You uh, already know Sway. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Thank what you, up? my guy. Yeah, go ahead, Daniel. Go ahead. Appreciate it. <laughs> no, no, thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. Daniel got a nice radio voice too, man. Really I mean, he making my good. shit deeper. <laughs> yeah, yo, thank you, Ricardo. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> the fuck is going on over here? This dude got everything, man. You gotta do it like that. You gotta do it like that. Come on, man. You do everything, man. Hey, Ricardo, you a citizen? Get out of there, man. Good morning. All right, Anthony. Real quick, go ahead. I know you held on. Go ahead, Anthony. Hey, Ant. Hey, what's up, guys? I'll make this quick. Uh, real quick, guys. From working in Black, uh, Black Panther, what did you guys learn from observing Chadwick Boseman, and did you guys receive advice from him? Um. Yeah, yeah, I did because um, uh, um, R.I.P. Oh, um, nice. uh, 
Get Out was coming out when uh we was we was prepping for Black Panther. So the trailers were coming wow. out whilst we was in rehearsal, and it like came out whilst we was on set. And then uh, I think he knew <laughs> he knew what was happening, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So he he kind of I remember. I sat opposite him in dinner and he was just like, yo, like, and he was just giving me pointers in interviews. I had this press talk. I didn't even have a publicist these times. Mm-hmm. I was just going in and just talking. And then, um, and then like, um, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yo, it's, uh, it's what I think. And then they said, you were wild. Daniel's talking. I was like, chatting. And then, um, and then he just gave me pointers and kind of like, he just really, he just big broad me, man. He's just kind of like, yo, you know, do this, don't say this. I know you may have done this, but don't say it this in this interview. Go this interview. This is this is what it's about. Do you know what I mean? And it's like he didn't have to do that. Right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. he like, and uh, this is before he knew what was gonna happen before like the film came out and what was happening. Mm. And he showed me a lot of love and like he get he did a speech with me and Lupita and Denai had a birthday party. He did a speech for all of us. Said the lovely words and Aww. stuff. So Chad Chad's a s- solid guy, man. He always he always looked out for me, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you for sharing that, man. Um, that's amazing. I remember last time we 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 actually for that movie we did a town, town hall, hall yeah. um, with Chad. And that was the last time we had a chance to see him. Amazing spirited individual. So are you, Daniel? Salute to you, man. Congratulations okay. on everything, Salute man. To you both. Man, I enjoy what. Man, when you look at me, I feel those the same <laughs> get out eyes and shit. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, Jordan, look at me. Stop looking at me, uh, dog. Why is he doing <laughs> Oh, before I get a teacup. Before I stir that. It get me sunken. It get me sunken. Kane, <laughs> a.k.a. Yo. Kano, man. It's honor to have you on this show, brother. Nah, nah, yeah. it's a pleasure to be here. And you know what it is, Sway. Like, yeah, super legend. Appreciate you, man, and Thank everything you. you've done for, Thank you. you know, the culture. And, like, your stuff travels, man. It, it, it travels. Like, everyone knows you. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Everyone knows you, man. Thank you, Real man. You. I'm yeah. all of y'all family. Love, I'm everybody's family. That's what I yeah. aim to be. So when you come in here, that's the energy we bring. Absolutely. No, we grew up. We grew up with you, man. Yeah, so we appreciate you. Yeah, Give me a hug, Daniel. Fuck that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Back to the get out <laughs> eyes, you in? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's great, man. I hear that all the folks say they grew up with you, and I tell them I grew up doing it. So we we all you know grew up together, right? Yeah, yeah not really. And we still here winning, man. The Kitchen official Netflix. Yeah. Uh, coming out January nineteenth. Yes. Next Friday. Yes, sir. That's next Friday. Next Friday, yeah. Let's get it, uh, gentlemen. Thank you for coming through. Thank no, you. Thank Anything y'all want to say in closing? Watch Kitchen, man. Jan 19th. Appreciate you, everyone in the room, man. Thank I you. love to everyone. Love Happy New love. Year. Thank you. Happy, Happy New, New Year, well. man. Give it up for Daniel Kaluuya, Kane Robinson. Yay. All right, we come right back. Straight for five. Play that freestyle, Tori. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby.